Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating your own television program with Access Fort Wayne, call 421-1250. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, neurosurgeon, Fort Wayne, Indiana, for 42 years. <laughs> I've taken a great interest in wellness because seven out of 10 patients that I see in the office, frankly, need a coach. They don't need an injection or a narcotic or an operation. They just need to improve their health habits. And frankly, I'm responsible. I'm a physician. Physician means teacher. And I'm just trying to do my job here. This is a continuing series uh, that uh, I'm doing, uh, frankly, on properly eating. We have a tremendous obesity problem in the United States. 70% of the people are overweight. We have uh, at least uh, approaching 40% of the people that are obese. Our children are getting overweight and obese. Uh, and we are developing the secondary diseases uh, that uh, diabetes, heart disease, increased cancer rates, and I'm trying to undo this, prevent it, make you healthy, and <laughs> make you look good too. And it's really not that hard. And, uh, but I think the more I educate you, uh, the more, uh, frankly, I think it would be much easier for it. Today, it's getting a little serious uh, here today. Uh, and the name of the show is Corn Belt Belly. Now, why did I pick this title? I recently read a book called Wheat Belly, Wheat Belly. And I think this uh, a gentleman who wrote that, I think it, it, it's, it's wrong. Uh, and uh, it's more corn, frankly, that's causing this obesity problem. But wheat does have something to do with it. And I'll show you the differences uh, and uh, teach you a proper way of eating. And I think this will, uh, you'll have to just be a little bit open-minded because we are indeed uh, looking at a, a, an overweight population. And, and uh, you know, now and then we need to take our clothes off and have a realistic look. It may be difficult for many of us. And uh, there are multiple pot bellies. Corn, I personally believe, uh, is the biggest cause of it, uh, primarily being uh, it's, it's in the majority of our food. A uh, high fructose corn syrup, what's it made from? Uh, it's, it's made from corn. 50% uh, of obesity accounts for a high fructose corn, corn syrup. That's half right there, no less the other processed foods, you know, which we are eating. So I think corn uh, very clearly is the biggest culprit. Just drive around. What do you see out there? Corn fields. You don't see wheat fields. But wheat is number two on the list. Maybe a number of years ago, uh, wheat was number one. Uh, but a lot of wheat is, is complex carbohydrates, uh, which I, I uh, believe is not the biggest cause of this. But uh, I agree to a little uh, debate on the issue. Uh, beer bellies, we all hear about beer bellies. We'll discuss that a bit. Stress. Matter of fact, a pot belly is a sign of a stressed out individual. That's throughout the literature. But it's not the biggest cause. But, you know, it's, it causes us to eat, though. And what is the stressed out individual eating? Most of the time, a corn product. So, uh, high fructose corn syrup as a drink, for example. So uh, stress is definitely part of it. And frankly, the mad, sad, toxic American diet uh, is the biggest cause uh, of a, uh, a pot belly. And uh, women are particularly uh, exposed to, uh, when the estrogens uh, go down, uh, postmenopausal, uh, many women experience this. All of a sudden, they're eating the same f food, they think, and all of a sudden, bango, they got a pot belly. So we see this postmenopausal uh, uh, pot belly uh, quite often, actually. 
uh, and chronic steroid use. If you're on steroids on a regular basis, it's quite common your face gets puffy and you develop a pot belly. So this, this is a complication of chronic steroid uh, uh, use. And we'll discuss these uh, types uh, throughout this tape and try to clarify things a little bit. Let's talk about abdominal fat a little bit. I mean, what is it? Where is it located? Uh, most of the time, actually, especially, uh, uh, it's under the skin, only part of the time, the subcutaneous tissues. That's called android fat. Most of the time, actually, it's located in the abdominal cavity, in the peritoneal cavity. And that's where it's very dangerous because it invades our organs. It's in our heart, it's in our liver, it's in our small bowel, it's in our large bowel, it's in our uh, pancreas. Uh, it's in our omentum, that membrane that uh, bathes uh, the rest of our organs. And it makes nasty chemicals. Visceral fat is very dangerous, especially if it invades your liver and causes fibrosis. Uh, you can develop cirrhosis of the liver. Believe it or not, 25% of the people in America today have invasion of the liver by fat. And that very well may lead to diabetes, cancer, increased fats uh, in, in, your, in your blood, uh, and cirrhosis. You may need a liver transplant. About 20% of those people don't even know they have it because it causes very few symptoms uh, till it becomes advanced. And we'll discuss that in more detail. So let's talk a little bit about a fatty liver. And uh, it's also called cryptogenic liver disease. Non-alcoholic, we're talking about non-alcoholic. This is more common now than alcoholic liver disease. So fatty liver cirrhosis. It's also, uh, also called non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease, NAFLD. You see those terms. It is extremely common. Uh, if you're overweight, you've got a pot belly, and you've had it for years, I'd get some liver tests. You, you, you may not know, but you may actually have it. And you've got to do something about it, or uh, once this fibrous activity takes place in your liver, it may not be reversible. Uh, so you, the earlier you catch it, the much more likely you can reverse this condition. Let's talk a little bit about wheat belly. Remember we talked about the book I was finished reading, Wheat Belly? I mean, I learned a lot in this book. We have 25,000 varieties uh, of wheat, uh, but wheat has been genetically altered. It's not the wheat uh, a few hundred years ago, uh, uh, 100,000 years ago. It's different wheat. It's, t it's totally different wheat. It's been genetically altered, and our body is not used to it. There's been not enough time in evolution uh, and in time for us to change, and our body... Uh, doesn't properly react to it. Uh, so there's no resembles to the ancient wheat. And they had certain names for the ancient wheat. It was called Emma. The, the genetic structure was maybe 18, maybe 18 carbons, that's it. When today's wheat might have 100 or 200 uh, uh, carbon atoms in it. Icorn was the next uh, uh, form of wheat, still fairly ancient, it was called Einkorn, which in German means uh, one corn, <laughs> that's interesting enough. Uh, and today, a wheat is much smaller. It's called it's dwarf wheat. It's, and, and a lot of these wheats are genetically altered and are owned by certain companies. It's a hybrid. They, they own the darn thing. And a uh, very uh, uh, instinct. So wheat, I mean, this gentleman that wrote this book uh, thinks wheat is high glycemic index. Uh, but Dr. McDougall, who has published many famous books and this started 30, 40 years ago, uh, he uh, disagrees with that. As a matter of fact, in his book, McDougall's book, which I just picked up, frankly, at the Notre Dame bookstore yesterday, and I, I read it through the night, uh, and I've read many of his stuff, uh, many of uh, his, his things before, uh, really quoted 10 scientific papers showing uh, that uh, high glycemic complex carbohydrate, I mean, complex carbohydrates don't raise the blood sugar very quickly. Uh, and, and he proved it with these papers. And, and I will discuss that uh, further. So, uh, so it's not generally known. Uh, I don't agree that wheat is in the high glycemic index. I would say this, if you have trouble losing weight uh, uh, by uh, uh, eating, uh, you gave up meat, you gave up f uh, f fatty foods, you gave up cheese, 
and you're still a bit overweight, have a look at what you're eating. You may be eating a lot of donuts, you may be eating a, a, a lot of fatty foods that you, that you are not aware of. So, and, uh, but then you might consider uh, watching what you eat carefully and cut back on wheat. Cut back on wheat, wheat at that point. But generally, uh, if you're not eating meat products, you're not eating, uh, drinking a lot of fatty milk or a lot of cheese or uh, uh, a lot of animal uh, products, uh, wheat is not going to hurt you. But again, on that small number of cases uh, where uh, you seem to come to a point, can't lose that extra 10 pounds, you look at the wheat product. Uh, and, uh, and the terms we mentioned before, Emma, Einkorn, Tritacum, that's the next generation of genetic alteration of wheat. Uh, and uh, we've had more transformations of wheat than Joan Rivers has had cosmetic operations. <laughs> okay, let's have a little humor here. So there's been no time in evolution to adjust to it. Uh, and it, it's had many chromosome changes. So little, and there's been little testing of hu human tolerance. How well do we uh, tolerate it? Uh, you know, you talk, now they speak a lot about glutens, which we're not tolerating, and that comes from wheat. That's a protein of wheat, it's called gluten. And we want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, and a modern wheat is 70% carbohydrate, 12% protein, 12% fiber, and 5% fat. Ancient wheat was 28% protein, much less carbohydrate. So uh, uh, complex carbohydrates today, frankly, are the darlings of the dietitians. I mean, this is really uh, what they push. And I would say that, uh, uh, that uh, generally, uh, I, I agree with that uh, uh, to a point. Uh, as long as it's complex, that means it has comp complex sugars. You're not gonna absorb it all. You maybe will metabolize 70% of a complex carbs versus 97% uh, of uh, a fatty substance, okay? So Dr. McDougall, uh, clearly uh, recommends uh, that you eat complex carbohydrates. I just wanted to kind of bring to your attention about the, the wheat thing. If, if you're giving up animal products and cheese and, you, and you've plateaus and no longer uh, losing weight, well, have a, then have a look at the wheat issue. But to, to bring wheat and, and complex carbs out of your diet is a mistake. So what is this gentleman in this book really talking about? He's really talking about the Atkins diet. Cut back on your carbs and eat fat and meat, for Pete's sake. That diet by Dr. Furman and, and Dr. Bernard in their books called the Atkins diet a fraud. A fraud. Uh, bec because a high protein diet does not lead to good health. Uh, uh, animal protein has in it uh, cancer products, cholesterol in it, uh, has uh, uh, fat in it. Uh, it. It's a very, it has the hormones uh, and the antibiotics that were given to the beef, and you're eating the darn things, and you're eating the darn things. So uh, uh, animal products, frankly, uh, are dangerous. And we'll talk some more about that uh, later, and i carefully explain that to you. So uh, what is the carbohydrate that's in wheat? It's 75% amylopectin A, good thing to know, and the 25% amylose. And, and, uh, and uh, it, it, some people think that the amylopectin A can cause a rapid rise in the blood sugar, but the amylose is a lot more complex and doesn't really uh, uh, do that. And uh, the, let's talk about the glycemic index where they took sugar and they check your blood every 30 minutes for the next couple of hours. Uh, and, and it was invented in Toronto in 1981. And when I recommend the way of eating, which I recommend complex carbs, 100% whole grain, vegetable, uh, beans and fruit, essentially all you can eat, not much animal product. My food pyramid, I got a little animal product, animal product uh, on the top, but not uh, very much because of the cancer factors, the hormone factors. Uh, and uh, uh, what are the glycemics of different things? Like fruit, uh, GI about 59, uh, some even lower than that. Uh, white bread, 69, uh, whole grain bread, 72. I wonder about that figure, but that's about it. Uh, uh, I've been reading table sugars, 59. So you want to eat 50 or under most of the time, but, but you don't have to all the time. And uh, chocolate is 68, and whole wheat spaghetti, 42. Uh, wheat can be more uh, resistant, harder to absorb uh, because of the fibrous component to it. And uh, pasta is generally made from the old wheat called emma. 
so it has a little bit lower GI uh, and a, but pasta with diabetes, the blood sugar is going to be a little higher. So a diabetic ought not to eat that much uh, pasta. So, but the amylose part of the uh, of the wheat, remember we talked about, uh, that's about 25 percent of the wheat, uh, uh, is is full of resistant starch, and amyl and that's what pasta is made from majority of the time. Kind of an interesting fact. Uh, and uh, so wheat products raise the blood sugar more than. Uh, than some other products. Uh, this gentleman who wrote the wheat belly, I, I don't, Dr. McDougall wouldn't agree with that. So if you can't lose weight, try cutting out wheat. We mentioned that before. Certainly a dozen donuts will lead to obesity. But, but, but those are processed food. Remember, we, I was trying to distinguish processed from non-processed food. And uh, so, uh, so, and certainly a pot belly will be resolved and maybe even uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, gluten, we hear about gluten and that, that's a protein, okay? Uh, and it's found uh, mainly in wheat. It's found in some other more rarely eaten products, so wheat, but like oats, but wheat is the main thing. I mean, corn even has a little bit of uh, gluten in it. Uh, it's what makes dough doughy, okay? It in increases the, the viscoelasticity that gluten does, and it's 80% protein. Uh, and uh, some people uh, do not uh, tolerate it, and I think it's based on evolution because we haven't had grains around about 10,000 years, and our bodies haven't had a ch uh, change. And some people, it makes them quite sick. They get celiac disease, a bowel disease, which has many symptoms from seizures to diarrhea to weight loss to, to uh, uh, you name it. Uh, uh, it can really masquerade and be a real fooler. So it's something to keep in mind uh, that you're not tolerating uh, a gluten. Mainly, they, they, they're called the gliadins. You can run the gliadin test, you're positive or negative in the blood, three subtypes. Uh, they're the storage uh, proteins of wheat. Uh, remember, emma, icorn, trichum, they're different proteins. Uh, they cause celiac disease, a very serious disease, but it's not that common. But you can have reaction to gluten from rashes uh, to, to uh, uh, seizures, uh, they can be almost any symptoms in the body. So if, you, if, if your doctor can't figure something out, keep, kind of keep that in mind. You might want to run a, uh, a gluten uh, blood test. And uh, exorcisms, now we've heard of endorphins, that's our own morphine, our good feel-good products, but we also have exorphins. Exorphins are related to the uh, gluten, uh, and uh, when the uh, gluten protein products uh, work their way through our, our bowel, uh, and if there's a reaction uh, to them, uh, these chemicals uh, form abnormal pro proteins, and they get in the blood systems, uh, and they can affect our mind. They're called the exorphins. In other words, uh, th we get them externally from food that we eat, endorphins, other hormones that make us feel good, make us feel good uh, ourselves, okay? But exorphins are from uh, products we eat from the outside, but they do affect our mind. So we call them exorcism, and they can't occur from wheat. And uh, it's almost like morphine. They call it gluteal morphine. So we can actually make ourselves feel good uh, uh, as a side effect uh, of gluten products, but then again, they make us sick too. So, so it gives the brain a high, something to keep in mind. And, uh, so, and wheat addiction is a result. And maybe that's why we can't just eat one donut. We gotta eat a dozen, instinct, kind of uh, instinct. Uh, wheat obesity connection. So, uh, as I said, they might walk up to you uh, if you have that pop up and say, when are you due? Well, we hope we don't have to embarrass yourself like this. So decrease wheat consumption if you can't lose weight. If you can't lose weight by eliminating uh, uh, meat products, uh, cheese products, maybe some milk products, uh, you might consider to cut back on the wheat. But like I said, I don't think wheat is the biggest cause of a pot belly. I think eating corn products uh, is the answer. But I want you to understand wheat a little bit. It may be playing a part. Let, let's, let's see if this gentleman who wrote the wheat belly uh, is right. I don't think so. McDougall doesn't think so. But let, let's be open-minded here. And uh, so fatty visceral organs, which occur from obesity, 25% uh, of the U.S. where you mentioned a fatty liver. So get your liver checked. If you, if you got a pot belly and you don't know uh, what your blood figures are or your liver figures are, find out. Very important because a lot of the things may be silently in your body and causing you vascular disease, heart disease, uh, cancer. In today's newspaper, incidentally, I read again uh, that we could cut the breast cancer uh, rate uh, probably in half uh, if we had a nutrient-dense diet. 
they found patients who have met metastasis from breast cancer do much better if they follow a nutrient-dense way of eating, something which I promoted for a long time. But it's not generally known that cancer doctors hardly ever bring it up. Uh, there was a major cancer lecture at Lufthansa Hospital at 7 o'clock Monday, and they were talking about someone who had cancer spread all over the body. But no one brought up the diet. Interestingly enough, the professor who gave part of this talk was at Starbucks. I think God sent him there. He got in the line behind me. I think God sent him there. And we had a 15-minute conversation out in the sun out there, and, and he was very nice. Uh, we had a ni very nice conversation. He agreed that breast cancer indeed is dependent on fat a great deal because of estrogen is produced by the fat. Uh, so if you want to cut the breast, breast cancer rate in half, get to normal, get to normal weight. Uh, it's not mentioned much, but I see it, it's, it's out a lot more. And I'm going to gather all that literature and give a talk to that to the cancer doctors because it's not stressed. Prevention is the thing. So insulin is what drives the fat deposition. Okay, the blood sugar's up, insulin goes up, and insulin uh, with lipase will lay the fat down, and that's what makes you fat. So anything raises your blood sugar uh, can lead to obesity. Uh, and remember what I said, what, can what does this fat invade? The liver, the pancreas, the heart, the bowels, the kidneys, large and small, and the intestines. Uh, so visceral fat is very dangerous, very uh, dangerous. Fat has estrogen in it, inflammatory chemicals, cytokines, growth factors. Fat is a gland, very active. It just don't sit there. It's very active. Uh, and uh, this increase uh, Inflammatory chemicals uh, in your blood can cause dementia, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disease, and cancer. So to be of normal weight is extremely, extremely uh, uh, important. Uh, and a wheat has a glycemic index of 72 uh, and, and higher than you would think. Table sugar, 59. Fructose, 59, that you find in fruit. Fat has a lot of estrogen. And uh, a pot belly increased breast cancer rate, good 40%. Don't forget that. Spread that. Let everyone know that. Hardly any women I talk to know that. I talked to 200 cancer nurses last year at Lufthansa Hospital. Not a one of them knew that you could cut the breast cancer rate in half if you get to normal weight. Critical. Critical. So, zubiquity. Zoo, zoo now, this is kind of interesting. I finished a book reading about this. And uh, written by an MD, actually. Yes, animals do get pot bellies. Many may, of you may know that, but the interesting thing is usually the owners also have a pot belly because they're feeding the cat the same kind of food, and they overfeed them, uh, and, and this happens. It's very dangerous for the animal. you are shorten their life. So animals do get fat, just like us. What do you do if your cat's overweight like the one you see in the picture? That's easy. You feed them the catkins diet. <laughs> Let's have a little laugh here. And uh, if your bird is overweight, you call him a perch potato, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so dogs, cats, birds, horses, fish, they all get fat. You provide them enough food, and, and you, if we eat a nutrient-dense diet, that'll turn your appetite off. But if you're eating the fat, fat, mad, sad, toxic American diet, you don't have the phytochemicals that turn your appetite off. Uh, and you will just keep on eating, just like these animals. These animals uh, have no control. They will just keep on eating if you give them food. They'll just keep right on eating. So you have to train them for a very young age. I noticed my wife trained uh, uh, our cats, and I couldn't feed them food off the table. I can't believe it. They were trained that way from the beginning. The dog, who I gave stuff under the table because that's my relationship with the dog. You know, my wife is uh, who he loves. But I tell you, we have a relationship based on food, and he would eat all day and all night uh, if I uh, fed him. So that was not a go good idea. I did that. My wife said, the dog dies, I got trouble. I suspect that could be the case. And uh, so an obese uh, person usually has an obese pet 25 to 40 percent of the time. It's, it's a very uh, uh, instinct. And, uh, Animals, they're all lean and healthy, right? No, wrong. They turn fat just like us. Abundant food and access leads the way. Nothing turns appetite off. They don't have the phytochemicals that we have. Uh, they have the 100 genes that, that keep us eating just like us. 
it's the 100 genes that go back in history. That, that means we, we had to gather the food. and We weren't going to see it every day to eat everything in our sight, to even hoard the food. Uh, that, that's based on our genetic structure. Uh, so we have a lot of drive to keep on eating. And we have to be very careful about that. We need the phytochemicals from good nutrient-dense food to turn our appetite off. And uh, domestic animals won't stop eating. You must teach them. Obesity is a disease of the environment. What's around us? Fat, salt, and sugar hijacks the brain. It hijacks the brain. And uh, steroid belly. Uh, remember, you talked, uh, spoke about that earlier. A pot belly many times is a sign of a stressed out individual. We use food uh, to satisfy uh, uh, our mental uh, need. It's dopamine, it's serotonin. Heck, I do it. I got a stressed out, horrible day. It's tough for me to avoid bad food. Uh, and you have to be very careful uh, about this. So the, the impulse comes from the frontal lobe to the hypothalamus at the bottom of the brain. Im hormones get sent to the adrenal gland, that's on top of your kidney. And we secrete cortisol, and, and cortisol says, the tiger is running at us. Uh, and, and we need energy, so we start eating. The trouble is in our society, there's no tiger. There's no tiger. We're sitting behind the TV, uh, in front of the TV, eating potato chips. And we're thinking stressed out thoughts. Uh, and uh, that's how we get, uh, gain weight. You think the tiger's running at you, your thought process. And uh, pot bellies are many times signs of st stressed out uh, individual. And the food that we normally eat at those times, of course, is junk food. It's junk food. I mean, potato chips are nothing but fat trays. They're nothing but fat trays. Nothing uh, but processed foods from corn. And then we have a sugary drink, which is 50% of obesity, high fructose corn syrup, uh, which is very sugary uh, and uh, doesn't turn our appetite off. We eat and drink a lot more. And uh, I might tell you about a little trip I t uh, took a couple of days ago. My uh, father-in-law had a little minor heart thing. Fortunately, it turned up enough he major, but I took a trip to see him. Uh, and uh, remember, we, uh, I taste food for, for where it comes from to what we eat to our plates. Uh, and, uh, and I've spoken before uh, about corn. I, I think corn is a real problem in this country. Uh, like oh, Iowa, is 98% corn now. Uh, and uh, the government supports, supports the price of corn. You say, oh, that's just marvelous. The darn trouble is they made it so cheap that they concentrated animal uh, food uh, oper uh, operations where they take an animal and put them in a cage, okay? Uh, uh, they uh, then feed them for 150 days concentrated corn. That is in it hormones, growth hormones, petroleum products. Uh, those beasts stand in their own feces. Uh, pesticides uh, uh, put them there to, to, to uh, kill the flies uh, that, are, that are involved with the feces. And, and then we kill the animal in 150 days. Why after 150 days? Because it's too sick to go on. It would die. 25% of the beef at that stage have liver abscesses and skin disease. Many have hernias, uh, which the farmer had to, re had to uh, repair. So we're really most of the time eating an unhealthy piece of beef. But anyway, as I left my lake cottage to, to go to see him in Goshen Hospital as I crossed Highway 6. What's in front of me? Now my eyes are open a concentrated animal feeding operation. I see the, the field that the, the animals are in. Then I, I, then I saw the cages they put them in uh, for, for six months to fatten them up. Uh, and they even give them hormones, incidentally, uh, so that they get fat quickly. Of course, you're eating, you're eating the hormones. Uh, and uh, also the, the insecticides they put on them uh, to keep them uh, alive. Uh, you, you're eating those uh, uh, also. But I witnessed this right on Highway 6. Then I went to Goshen to see him in the hospital. Then we left. We went to get a bite to eat. I passed 50 fast food restaurants. I counted them, 51. Fast food restaurants from Goshen uh, back to Syracuse. Not one restaurant was open on Sunday night. I could stop in and maybe order a vegetarian meal or something. 50 fast food restaurants. So you have any idea where America is heading? Any idea? I finally uh, I did make it to, to a restaurant and a bar. Uh, in uh, uh, Syracuse, uh, I won't give the name, but it's named after an amphibian, so we know. I looked at the menu. There were 30 items on there. I could not, could not order one of them that I thought was healthy. Uh, then he said, so how about salmon? So I ordered the salmon. But as I ate the salmon, it tasted like corn. Why? The animal you eat 
What are you eating? You're eating what that animal ate. What did that animal eat? That animal came from a farm of, with a pond where they fed him with corn. It's perverse. I must have eaten a, a, a corn cob even better because it was not processed. Yeah, it, 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 I must admit, it, it was not a good evening for me. And, uh, and, we, and uh, we have to, the parents need to watch too, uh, taking their uh, children to a fast food restaurant all the time. I see little children, they're ordering French fries. French fries, uh, fructose corn syrup, and they're fat trays. They're fat trays. Uh, and uh, you have to be careful on the hamburger. What's a hamburger? 60% fat. 60% fat. And if you think of the fat that it came from, these animals that have in them, the hormones and the antibiotics, and, uh, and, uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, and I wouldn't even want to tell you what, what they do to chickens when they raise them. I think I, 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 I'd be hesitant to really tell you. And, uh, uh, and uh, so, what, what, I mean, if feeding your children out of a fast food restaurant like that, to me, is, maybe it's child abuse, huh? Maybe it's child abuse. And uh, I'll talk about beer bellies a little bit. That's kind of interesting. I learned a few things there myself. Uh, to get one, you generally have to uh, uh, drink probably two or more beers daily. I mean, it varies from individual to individual, depending on your size and how big the drinks are, of course. Actually, what makes you more obese quickly and get a beer belly, if you binge, if you were to drink three or four be beers two or three days a week instead of one or two every day, you're much more likely to get a beer, beer belly from that. Kind of interesting. And it's different between males and females. It's different between races. It's different between types of alcohol, whether it's whiskey or beer. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and most of that fat ends up being visceral, very dangerous inside your abdomen. Uh, remember, as fat in the abdomen is like a gland. It makes nasty hormones, invades the liver. Again, let's go back to the fatty liver. I, mean, I, I want to get this straight because people ignore this. Uh, cryptogenic liver disease, that's fat invading the liver and fibrosing the liver, leading to a cirrhosis and eventually a liver transplant, and there's trouble for you. Uh, and uh, they use some uh, medical terms for this, NASH, N-A-S-H, just like we, before we said non-alcoholic non uh, liver disease, here's NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, sort of a, a generic uh, medical term. You'll see that around, non-alcoholic cirrhosis, fibrosis. Uh, obesity and, and uh, diabetics are very common. Of course, you, your uh, fat invades the liver. You're going to be type 2 diabetic where the insulin level is too high. You're going to have vascular disease, uh, dementia, increased can cancer rates, uh, increased uh, blindness, increased amputations. Type 2 diabetes, which is totally reversible 90% of the time. In other tapes, you can see how that is clearly done. Should be avoided. Don't accept a pill. If the doctor says, well, here's a pill. Your blood sugar is normal. You're fine. You may think you don't have diabetes. You got diabetes and it's inflaming your arteries and, and you're gonna get vascular disease, strokes, heart attacks, and amputations and blindness. And, uh, and get rid of your diabetes by getting your weight to a normal body mass index. Avoiding animal products is a, a big thing. Personally, personally, I think when you say, well, what's, what's worse, uh, 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 smoking or, or what we eat? It's clearly what we eat. It's clearly what we eat. Uh, alcohol kills 16% of the people, smoking 26% of the people. But what we eat kills 60% of the people, 60% of the people. So what we eat in America is worse than smoking. Even the paper today, you know, the uh, big article about stopping smoking, of course stop smoking. It's ridiculous. I never took a thread in my life. It's a horrible thing to do. But eating the sad, mad, toxic American diet is worse. So we need to emphasize that a bit. Uh, and 25% uh, of the nation, in the end, may need a liver transplant. Un unbelievable, unbelievable. It's going to get worse, too. This is an interesting fact, going back to Dr. McDougall, uh, about uh, starch and fat. Uh, and what Dr. McDougall is saying uh, that the 10 paper, scientific papers that he quotes and that, that I'm in the process of reading, uh, uh, that complex uh, carbohydrates like wheat do not call, cause lipogenesis. In other words, form, form uh, uh, fat. So 
and, and to form fat from starch is called de novo lipogenesis, okay? Starch to fat. It's a myth. It's a myth. At first, uh, you're going to lose 30% of it in the metabolism. Uh, some will be stored in the liver. Some will be stored in, in, uh, in the glycogen. The rest are used up in energy. Uh, and, and generally, then your appetite gets turned off by the, by the uh, nutrients in this food. Uh, and, and it would be very rare. Uh, and he quotes many studies where they took uh, 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 people and fed them uh, a lot of wheat products above what they would normally eat. You know what they found? They lost weight. They didn't gain weight. Numerous studies prove, prove uh, uh, that point. So there is little de novo lipogenesis, conversion of complex carbohydrates to fat. De novo lipogenesis. Very little of that. Many scientific papers on that, and any doctor disputes this, anyone wants to have a little discussion with me about it, i give you the names of the paper. I got them all, 10 of them. And I got them out of the Lutheran Library, and they were McDougall's book. The guy that needs to read those papers, frankly, is the guy that wrote the book, Wheat Belly. He needs to read those papers. I may send them to him. Uh, so wheat belly actually is rare. It's actually rare. But we learned something about wheat from his book, so I thank him for that. Uh, now, pigs and cows used the novo lipogenesis with them. Uh, uh, actually, it, and that's the reason they can put them in these concentrated feeding things, uh, because they keep on giving them this government-supported corn. The government is what's making us sick by, by paying uh, for this uh, uh, corn and wheat support payments, three of them, uh, actually. Uh, uh, farmers may not even care that uh, corn looks bad these days. They get three government payments. They get three government payments. The only thing we may not like is the cost of beef goes up, but actually I might like it. <laughs> I don't recommend it. And, uh, so, but pigs and cows can fatten up very quickly because they have de novo lipogenesis. Uh, we can concentrate them. As a matter of fact, they add additional fats from rendering from other animals when they're feeding the beef. Uh, they uh, uh, add that too to fatten them up quickly. So after, at 150 days, they've got to kill them. Otherwise, they die from diseases. Okay? And uh, we are eating the planet to death. This, this is Dr. McDougall, too, and he's got, got a point. We are destroying our environment. We are destroying our environment. What are we doing? Uh, because uh, to have uh, this tremendous amount of uh, uh, animals out there that, would, that we are feeding take a lot of water. It takes a tremendous number of chemicals uh, to keep uh, the, the corn healthy. Uh, and. Uh, we use petroleum products. If you eat a bushel of corn, you're probably eating a gallon of petroleum products. It's true. It's absolutely uh, true. Uh, the amount of water used up, we're destroying the aquifers uh, in, in, in Colorado, for example, where they have a lot of concentrated uh, uh, animal feeding uh, uh, organizations. Uh, and the, the water level in that big aquifer that crosses three or four states is, is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, uh, and smaller. We've already destroyed uh, our, our, our fish population. Maybe 10% of the large fish in the ocean are left. Yeah, we just destroyed by, over, by overeating uh, by uh, uh, the, the fish. Maybe 10% uh, uh, is, is left. Uh, and it's getting very serious in the world. And the world was fairly well fed and we were healthy when they were following a plant diet. But as people uh, get a little bit of money, they're starting to follow the way Americans are eating, uh, and uh, uh, it's, it, it's getting serious matter about the amount of food available in, in the world, the amount of pastoral land, for example. Uh, and it takes 16, incidentally, it takes 16 pounds of wheat uh, to produce one pound of beef, okay? What a waste. We could be eating that, that, that wheat or that corn uh, and, and be, be a lot healthier to begin without converting to to, to animal fat protein with all the cancer factors and hormone factors. It takes four pounds of corn or wheat uh, to, for a pound of por pork. It takes two pounds of corn or wheat to, for one pound of, of chicken. So we're wasting a lot uh, of uh, energy products uh, to produce uh, the food, uh, the sad food that we're eating. We're destroying our, our environment uh, with this type of uh, farming and use of petroleum products. 70% uh, of antibiotics in the world are, are used 
in these calf hose. Yeah. We pen up the animals, whether, whether it be a duck, or whether it be a chicken, or whether it be beef, it's all the same. Uh, if you read the book, The Mad Cowboy, incidentally, an excellent book to read. And he said, it doesn't matter, you, you eat beef, pork, uh, uh, duck, whatever. It's all got in it cholesterol, a lot of fat, hormones, uh, uh, and uh, 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 cholesterol. One billion people in the world are overweight. South Korea, with my friend Dr. Furman, who wrote the famous book, Eat to Live, went to visit recently. He's uh, teaching the Korean doctors a proper diet to teach uh, to the country. Uh, what happened? What happened? The Koreans used to be very, very healthy. They worked hard. They ate 40% white rice. Uh, that's high in the glycemic index, but they get away with that. It's only 40%. But they added 30%, the mad, sad, toxic American diet. So now they're eating 70% high glycemic index food and the type 2 diabetes rate, the obesity rate, exploded. Worse than us. Worse than us. Not believable, but it's true. Dr. Furman personally told me that. And I may even go over there and teach some of them myself, because he said that, that uh, those jobs are available. I might, I might consider doing it. And uh, uh, livestock contribute to 18% of global warming, incidentally. 18%. So the, the gases, the methane, the the, uh, uh, the ammonia and the petroleum products that we need to, to uh, keep them uh, uh, going. Uh, and we're causing a great deal of land and water damage. We, you know, we, all over the world, we're tearing down the trees uh, so we get, do animal grazing because people want to eat uh, animal products, which is making them sick. Then our government supports the price of corn and wheat and oats uh, uh, to make us sicker. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that just a wonderful thing? And, uh, uh, what are symptoms of fatty liver, in case it ever comes up, you're concerned about it? Fatigue, actually weight loss, uh, jaundice, you turn yellow because your liver doesn't work in the bilirubin, fever, bloody stools, just sort of a passing quick thing. Uh, let's talk, talk about king corn versus uh, queen wheat, <laughs> okay? Look at the fields. Iowa's 98% corn, no, f uh, no fences, no animals. They, they, they grow all that corn. 50, 60 percent is sent to the feedlots of Colorado and Kansas uh, and other states. And frankly, you know, I told you about one in Indiana, uh, many in Indiana, uh, where uh, they feed the animals in a cage to fatten them up to end up in your plate. So uh, wheat consumption plays a part, but it's not the king. They're, they're welfare queens. They're welfare queens. We support them with government money. The government money should go to healthy food, for Pete's sake. It, sh it should go to... Uh, uh, our vegetables and our beans and our fruits. To it's, it's perverse that they support the price of the corn and wheat, which is making us sick. What's wheat? Bread. It's a fat tray. What do you put on it? Butter, margarine. It makes us fat. Potato chips. It's a fat tray. And uh, so they subsidize economically and biologically. Uh, they even have patent. To, to, to wheat and corn now. And uh, matter of fact, uh, you can't use the product that the farmer grows to, for another generation of corn because it's ge genetically been patented and, and the second crop wouldn't grow. <laughs> well, incidentally, the corn you see in the fields today, 90% of you cannot eat. It tastes like paper. It's used to feed the animals, not for you. The corn you eat is 10% of the corn. That's 10% of the corn. And the rest is 30%, 40% used for high fructose corn syrup, which has been around since 1970. Uh, the Japanese uh, uh, perfected it, uh, and uh, it accounts for 50% of our BC. See, it's very sweet, uh, is why the uh, uh, different companies use it, so we get used to the sweet taste. But also, it's cheaper than regular sugar because the government supports the corn price. So they're killing us again with what we're drinking. It makes no sense. Uh, they're killing us, the government. They deal a lot with pain problems, too, doing the same darn thing. A lot of these pain centers I see, it's Medicaid, 90% Medicaid. The government pays for it, addicting a lot of people. Very sad, very sad. And I love the United States, but this is very sad. And uh, so high fructose corn syrup, 40% of corn production, very sweet, cheaper than sugar, does not turn the appetite off because there is no rise in insulin. You see, fructose, which is fructose corn syrup, is metabolized in the liver uh, and rapidly converted 
to uh, fat, LDL, the bad cholesterol, does not cause a rise in insulin, so it no, doesn't turn the appetite off. And that's the reason you can drink and come down the highway and drink a 72-ounce uh, b- bottle. And, and you can't stop uh, uh, drinking it uh, because it doesn't turn your appetite off. Matter of fact, it increases your appetite because of the high sugar content. You get used to higher sugary foods when you're drinking pop. I, I know a lady I met in the elevator recently whose family had operated a lot, and she got upset I didn't recognize her. Well, I didn't recognize her because she lost 40 pounds. And, and I said, well, what happened? Uh, how'd you do that? She stopped drinking your sugary drinks. That's it. No other change. Interesting. Good thing to know. And uh, little changes can result in big changes. And, uh, and, uh, and sugar, incidentally, this is a big point, and I want you to understand this. Sugar is more addictive than alcohol. Sugar is more addictive than alcohol. Interesting. I see a number of alcoholics, they're able to stop drinking, and then they exploded uh, in their weight and the, re- the reason was. Uh, th- this was even more pleasurable than the alcohol they had. Interesting. And uh, the cause of 50% of the BC fructose corn syrup. So we are now a corn nation. We are now a corn nation. Just think about it. Yes, we are. Matter of fact, uh, I watched a, a DVD the other day. If you can get a hold of it, it's interesting. It's called King Corn. King Corn. If there's a health care provider out there watching this, uh, uh, ask me for it. I'll let you borrow it. Uh, it's called King. Uh, uh, very. Uh, uh, very good uh, uh, video, and, uh, uh, and in it, uh, these two gentlemen uh, took 100 acres of farmland and then followed corn, I mean, all the way across from the uh, concentrated feeding operations uh, to growing it, what, what it's used for, uh, and, and, and the disappointment. And they, what they did is they started the show by cutting off a hair of one of the gentlemen, and they, then they studied in the laboratory and did... And the, the, and, and with that, because uh, different types of corn, different, different things that you eat, have a certain carbon uh, signature, okay? Uh, and they could tell uh, that they were, in essence, that, that scientist said, you are corn walking. Your life is spent eating corn. We're not t- t- talking about an ear of corn. We're talking about all the processed foods of corn. They said, you are corn walking. We are made from corn. That's the beginning of the show. Very interesting. Uh, today, they can grow 30,000 bushels per acre, 10,000 pounds of food per acre, because they moved the corn much closer together and they genetically altered it. So there's a, t- a tremendous surplus of corn. We send it all over the world. We're fattening up the whole darn world and, and killing ourselves in the process and the government pays for it. Uh, without government support, this would not happen. We'd be eating different food because this makes the corn so cheap. See, it takes, costs more to grow the corn than, than they can sell it for. It costs two and a half bucks to make it, and you can only sell it for a buck and a half. That's approximations. Uh, but uh, the government gives them the rest of the money back so they can keep on growing, and then that's used to feed in, in the concentrated animal feeding things. And, and, and incidentally, I, I read a book uh, called Slaughterhouse, where they slaughter the things. I, I'm not going to bring that up tonight. Uh, I couldn't stand it. I, I could not stand to read that book. I just would read it like five pages at a time. And, and matter of fact, I watched another DVD uh, uh, that Oprah had watched, so she doesn't eat uh, pork anymore, called Babe. And I'm watching it like 30 seconds at a time. I, I, I can't take it. And, uh, and uh, so if you have trouble stopping, eating animal products, maybe read a little, watch a little DVD, see what you can take. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, uh, so, and there's so much, many petroleum products use as fertilizer that we add uh, to our production of, uh, of, of corn that we are indeed eating a petroleum product. Uh, 30, about a bushel of corn uh, uh, has in it about a half a gallon of gasoline. Yeah, that's what we used, the ammonium nitrate we used to fertilize the product. Uh, so, but 90% of the corn grown today is not edible. It, it, it's uh, like paper. One of the big meat packers, only about four of them, Tyson, Cargill, Swift, uh, and National, uh, these two gentlemen who, 
uh, grew corn on these 100 acres, couldn't enter some of these plants. They wouldn't allow it, especially the processing plants. They wouldn't let them in there. Uh, what are the ruminators? See, a ruminator is a stomach that's got four compartments. This is a huge. Uh, and, but see, we can't eat grass. Uh, but a, a cow, like you see in the, in the uh, picture there, can eat the grass uh, because it has these four compartments, a lot of uh, acids in there, very complicated stomach. Uh, they're the only ones going to eat grass. That's a healthy way to raise a, raise a cow. It takes three or four years to raise a cow like that, and they can, then they can be slaughtered. But when they put them in a pen, they can get the whole process done in about a year and a half. Saves money, makes it cheaper. That's why we can afford to eat so much meat. Uh, because the government support of corn that feeds the cow that makes it cheaper to go to market and then they slaughter this um, uh, many times a sick cow and wheat they don't think it's full of hormones uh, and, and, and growth factors uh, and uh, so the CAFOs are built on a sea of petroleum it's taking sunlight to protein the stomach of a cow is a 20 gallon fermentation tank it's full of bacteria it's full of bacteria which digests the food for him Okay, and of course, the bacteria end up in the, in the, in the food. So uh, uh, we were not meant to eat corn. And, uh, and the CAFOs, what do they do to feed the cattle? They put in vitamins, antibiotics, extra fat. Actually, when they kill an animal, you know, half the animal uh, is, is, is cannot be given for food. So they use these products and feed them to beef. Some of that's been outlawed in 1997 because it was causing some brain diseases in England. They had a problem with that. Uh, and uh, but they still use the fat. That's called a beef tallow from slaughterhouses. It's shipped from slaughterhouses, and they feed it to the beef, and you eat the darn thing. They add molasses. They add urea. It's made from natural gas, another petroleum product. Uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, uh, and these uh, cows and beef are, st are standing in their own feces, uh, and they have to get some antibiotics to keep them alive because they have a high rate of infections. 25% of the st uh, steers and beef that are slaughtered, 25% have abscesses in their liver. Yeah. They got some bacteria throughout their body too, you know, and that's what you're eating, okay? And the growth hormones they, they, they give to the cow, of course, to, to uh, make her grow rapidly, the fatter she gets, the more money they make, okay? And they, and they, they sell beef and grade it. The U.S. government grades it, I think, by grading marbling, which is fat invasion of the muscle. A wonderful thing, right? No, it's deadly, actually. Uh, but the uh, uh, agricultural department thinks it's a wonderful thing. And uh, uh, what a uh, uh, rendering. That's feeding cattle parts back to cows. That was outlawed in 1997, but they still do some of that. Uh, and they're exceptions. So. Uh, you, can, uh, you can actually feed back... Uh, uh, feed back uh, fat and bloodborne products. That's the steak you eat. That's a, that's the steak you eat. Uh, Non-ruminant animal products can be fed to beef legally. The ones that don't have four stomach. Uh, here's a picture of a typical chicken uh, operation. Uh, I mean, you know what they do to a chicken actually? Uh, uh, at birth, they kill all the males because they don't lay eggs. They cut off the beaks off the females so they don't peck each other to death. Then they put them in a cage the size of a, a page of a book, uh, and they open the front door and the back door, and they say, you can get out any time you want to. Of course, they don't because there's no food there, and they, and they call that an organic chicken, right? <laughs> okay. They got no bones. They end up in your plate in six weeks. Uh, very healthy, right? I mean, give me a break. And, and the, uh, uh, a lot of the bedding, the... Uh, from the chicken, from the chickens and the litter, fed to beef. Yeah, it's a sale, high priced, high priced. And uh, so, chicken, fish, and and, and uh, pig meal are actually legal. Uh, and uh, sick animals, 25% beef have liver abscesses, and many died uh, uh, before the slaughtering. Uh, the slaughterhouse, like I said, you don't want to hear the story. Uh, I'm too disgusted uh, to tell it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, let's talk about exercise in a minute. This is sort of my last uh, slide here. That, that's extremely uh, important uh, if you want to go to this pot bed. But I tell you honestly, I've talked to some uh, uh, exercise uh, people, and I, you know, I, I work out two or three days a week, play tennis two or three times a night, I mean, uh, two or three times a week. So I, I do exercise. But I tell you, your belly, if you want a ripped belly, you're not going to get a ripped belly until you get the weight off. I don't care what you do. You can do all the ex exercise you want. If you're not losing weight, uh, you will not have ripped-looking muscles. And after all, 
since this is a show on belly, we like to get a ripped looking belly. But weight loss is important. But to do belly crunches, of course, is uh, very important. Take a good walk every day uh, is very important. So exercise is a big part of it, probably a third of it. But in the end, your muscles, are, you're not going to have that rip looking belly till you get that weight off your body. Uh, and if you exercise same time, uh, you can uh, really uh, look good. So this evening, we've had a little discussion on the pot belly. I didn't mean to uh, offend anyone, believe me. I went through that myself. I don't have it anymore, <laughs> okay? And, uh, uh, because I've learned a lot about eating. My dad had a deli in New York City. You think I, I know what bad food is? I sure do. And we sure as heck uh, had it there. And the delis in New York still have it. And, uh, but, you know, the restaurants are getting better. And, I, and, and uh, although I didn't experience it the other day, the 50 fast food restaurants, I'm going to start Ru uh, Rudy's Slow Food Restaurants. If you want to start one, let me know. You know, I might be interested in to help you. So what I generally recommend uh, eating is avoid animal products. They, they are full of fat, hormones, cholesterol, uh, cancer, uh, growth uh, factors, uh, and uh, very unhealthy for you. Uh, and if you read the book, The... Uh, uh, the Mad Cowboy, how he weighed about 300 pounds, 260 pounds, he gave up animal products uh, uh, and uh, exercised some. He went on at 60 pounds, his blood figures went to normal. So I recommend complex carbohydrates, 50% or less on the glycemic index, 100% whole grain. Don't overdo it in the grains. Remember we spoke about that. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, vegetables, beans, and fruit. All you can eat because the phytochemicals in this food will turn your appetite off. Uh, and please watch uh, other tapes uh, on reversing vascular disease, reversing uh, diabetes. And I think we've given you a, a big uh, education, I think, uh, in all aspects of eating from the good to the bad. And we had a, uh, I didn't say how you got to eat. I didn't say it at all. I'm just giving you the information. You decide. But remember, there are consequences to your decision. Uh, there are indeed are consequences, and, th and that you uh, have to uh, remember. My food pyramid, for example, has, you know, cruciferous vegetables at the bottom, and then fruit, and then beans, and some nuts, and 100% whole grain, and meats at the top. I didn't say don't eat any meat if, if you're fairly healthy, uh, you know, two days a week maybe. But if you got serious disease, vast disease, diabetes, and had a heart attack, and you want to live, you got to eat the way I'm telling you. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you're going to face the consequences, you know, of your decision. And I'm doing this, uh, frankly, because I love you, I care about you, and I hope you attend uh, lectures that I give. We get CDs, DVDs, books on Amazon. Uh, for example, I have a weekly TV show, uh, which is, you know, this is part of. And, uh, and uh, uh, we love you all, and, and uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, watching this uh, lecture. Feel free to write me send me a book to read, uh, a, a question. I'd like to hear any disagreements because I, uh, I'm always open-minded. I learn something every day. I read a book, you know, about every three days. Uh, and uh, I'm willing to, uh, it's a lot of fun learning new things. But I know what I teach works because I see the results in my patients. I love you all. Thanks a lot for listening.